these are many, many drums. And then, in addition to the drum, we have bells. We have this bell, then this bell, and this bell. Now, these are the main bells that we're using in this type of African diaspora drumming. As you may know, this is a cowbell. And this is what that sounds like. This is a Brazilian bell. This is called the agogo. Looks, I tell kids it looks like ice cream cones. <laughs> and it sounds like this. And this is the bell that the agogo took its example from. This is a Brazilian. And this is West African bell in several countries. And this is a double bell. Or in Ghana, it's called a gankogui. And what the cool thing about it is you can play it against your body to give it a wah-wah sound. So see if you can hear the wah-wah. So that's the gankogui with the wah-wah sound. So these are main bells, and we'll be getting back to them a little bit later, or not. And the thing is, I asked you folks to bring your own bell. So here is your bell, fast and a knife. And you play, try and find different sounds for different places, like if you hold a knife this way, It moves it up, changes the sound a little bit, hold it sideways. And if you stop the vibrations with your hand, well, it doesn't allow you to open and close very much, but you can stop vibrations of an instrument by closing your hand around it. And that happens with bells and drums in particular. So there we have that. We'll ask you to do some things with these. And then look at the shakers. Now, I asked you to bring a shaker of some kind. I have this shaker right here. And it's an orange. It's made for fun, having fun. So inside are beads. But there are several other kinds of shakers, which I'm going to grab right now. This is the mother of all the shakers right here. This is from West Africa. This is called a shaker ray. If you could say that, shaker ray. And it has the beads on the outside and the gourd. This is a more modern version. The gourd is made of fiberglass, the same as your motorboats. And this often is made, though, and traditionally uh, from a gourd that grows uh, in the ground as a part of the pumpkin family. And it's uh, natural material. So this is what it sounds like. Hear that echo in there. And then. So you start to play. Now that's the quiet version. There's a louder version. I'll move back a little bit. And you can always flip it upside down. Play it like that. Or like this. So the gourd is versatile and it's so loud that it doesn't hardly need a microphone unless you're in a really big group. But stay away from microphones with this because it cuts through everything. So this is the shaker aid. Now you may be wondering, well, I've heard of the maracas. Are those from Africa too? Well, let's see. Oh, here are maracas. And I always do the quiz. Are these from Africa? Are, are, are these from the Caribbean? Are these from the Native Americans? Are these from the Spanish? Well, the maracas are, I don't have the opportunity to give you the, uh, raise your hand for each one. These are from the Native American people. So they're all over the Americas and the Caribbean islands. And this part used to be skin. And as you can see, it's stitched together 
and inside are beads and stuff. So you hear them. Or, or, these are seen as toys by a lot of folks, but they're really very important instruments and um, virtuoso instruments in some cultures. They do wonderful things with the maracas. It adds a lot to the music, but guess what? It's the easiest one to play, and it does the least damage if you don't know what you're doing. So you always give these to people first, and you can play them like this and add to the music. And the, the secret I'll tell you about playing the maracas is when all the beats are changing, you keep playing. You keep a carpet of sound going underneath for everybody to enjoy the music better. And I'll demonstrate that soon but this is the idea keep it going so let's say the beats going doom ga doom 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 da doom 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 you know change or if it's going boop da ba dee dee boop da ba dee dee boop da ba or if it's going bra 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 you see it goes with everything boom bra 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 ti bra 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 boom bra 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 ti bra 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 and you can play faster or you can just play one one beat per measure, like one, two, three, four, one, two, or one and two, one, uh, one and three, one, two, three, four, boom, two, three, four. But the idea is the steadiness of it. That's the thing about the shakers. So the maracas from Native Americans, check these out. These shakers, I call them my um, Enterprise Starship shakers and uh, Star Trek, you know. But they're really the model of Brazilian shakers. They go from this small size to huge sizes made of aluminum. And you hold it like this and you bring it back and forth to shake. Again, the steadiness is the important thing. And ooh, this is a nice little shaker. It's like a arts and crafts project, you know, because this is a gourd, same type of gourd I told you about. This is woven from bamboo, and then inside is stuff, the usual suspects, beads, corn, uh, beans, and uh, it's called a cachichi. It's from Brazil. Or just the sound effects. This goes with the instrument I'm going to play pretty soon from Brazil, called a berimbau. So that's three families, the drums, the bells, and the shakers, one left. And that is the scrapers right over there. So let's bring them in. Oh, yes. These are the main scrapers. Who's that? Who said that? It's me, Josephine. Josephine, what happened to you? Well, I'm a survivor, you know. I don't have any more hair. You know how that goes sometimes. What? Yeah, but I'm strong and I'm here to show you how to play. Oh yeah? You didn't bring any wigs? No, I want to be for real with you guys. Okay, Josie. So what do we do? Well, turn me upside down. All right, I can do that. And then? You put your fingers in my eyes. Ooh, Josie, you know, that sounds a little sketchy to me. Oh, go ahead, you silly. All right, okay, okay. Oh. And now, yeah, they're touching. It's kind of squishy in there. It is not. I know it's empty. Okay, okay, it's empty. All right, what do I do? Get a stick. All right, I got a stick. So I'm looking for a skinny stick because I know you like it to be fitting in your grooves. Okay, I couldn't find a stick that's made for you, but I got a drumstick, skinny one. And then you scrape me up and tap me twice. Why? That's the universal scraper sound. You mean? It goes with everything. Oh, let me try it again. Okay, now you have to do it in rhythm. Oh, what rhythm is that? 
slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Okay, okay, I'll try it. Thanks, Josie. You're welcome. So this is the scraper that most people recognize as the one from the Caribbean. Again, it used to grow in the ground, made from this material here, but now they make it out of fiberglass because it wants to outlive everybody. And this is what the big bands play, and it's uh, indestructible. So it's called a guiro, G-U-I-R-O. And this is the top. So when you get it in your hand, if you want people to think you are cool and you, you've been been down this road before, don't hold it like this. Just hold it upside down. <laughs> okay, so that's the guiro. Now let's look at the cousin. This is used in Cuba and Puerto Rico quite a bit. This one is used in the Dominican Republic. And this is the guira, G-U-I-R-A. And this is used for their national music, merengue. And this is what you play it with. And sometimes they hold it so they dampen the sound. Remember we talked about that? This lets the sound ring because you're not touching the body. Now when you touch the body, you close the sound down a little bit because it's loud. And that's what the sound closed down. Slow, quick, quick. Here we go. Okay, so the merengue music have a special technique they use because their beat is something like this. So you have a... Yeah, so this instrument also is a specialty instrument in the Dominican Republic. People play this alone, and they sound like a machine. They're so good. Then, last but not least, in the scraper department, we have the heckle heckle from Brazil. Ah, made from a drain pipe from a house or a building and a spring. And you can play it with a lot of things. You can play it with the knife, play it with the stick, and you can play it with an iron rod. So let's try the blunt end of the knife. So I don't want to freak out the mic. And the thing is, you press on the spring to close the sound down, and you open it up. Do like that. So here we go. That's the heckle heckle sound. This uh, is an African derived instrument and it's used a lot in the carnival. So now you have a sense of the four families, the drums, the bells, the shakers, and the scrapers. And you put them all together to create percussion sounds and voila you have music and what kind of use does that have in society well it's used most music and dance started out for more of a sacred i would say religious because religions didn't exist in all their variety as now but so i say purposes of a sacred acknowledgement of the relationship between man or humans and the earth and the, the nature and their spirit. So spiritual expression was what these instruments were used for. And some people specialize in this. You call them priests today. And they were called shamans and griots in different countries. So that 
also went together with singing, good with percussion, perfect match, and dancing. Not always, but very often these rhythms, rhythmic based music was used for dancing. So we have that and the speed at which they're played is usually appropriate for people to dance comfortably. And if you increase the speed, people's dancing speed increases and their, their body gets more integrated and uh, heightened, their heart's beating faster, their awareness is opened and it has the potential to change their sense of self and make lasting impressions, especially if it's combined with visuals that are relevant to what people, the message is being conveyed and uh, singing words that are meaningful to the people and then controlling the music and its speed and its intensity. So there you have the transformational power of music in its beginning stages and it exists today with all the modern things we have. So let's, let's uh, uh, start an intro to this. And uh, people have any questions right now? So if anybody has a question, you can just unmute yourself. Hmm. Oh, oh, I'm going to go on then. I'm going to get into Brazil. And, uh, you know, Brazil is a country with 210 million people and uh, the United States has 330 million. So it's, it's big. And uh, we have some cultural expressions there that people know about, you know, in particular, there's the carnival. And uh, I think some countries have a national uh, dance and music form that's important to know about. Brazil has samba and samba started off, you know, with two drums and people in a circle dancing in the community. And it evolved over time into a huge spectacle of a parade and hundreds of drums and a festival that lasts for a week or so. In some countries, it's called Mardi Gras, like here in New Orleans. And I had the luck to be at Mardi Gras this year. I just caught the end of it, though, and I didn't get the coronavirus because my friend stayed away from all the parades who I stayed with, which is good. But the, um, the samba is something I'm going to start with the way it was in the community. And I would say this is a t chance to look at how you have been instructed to bring your hands. And I'm gonna move my hands down so you can see. And I'm on the tabletop now. And your hands can play along by playing your tips of your fingers. Or you can play your whole hand Okay, oh, you can play the heel, this part of your hand, to get the two sounds, right? Or boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 boom. So when I play the samba, you will hear a bait that goes one, two, one, two, one, two. This is the basic beat. And also have you think about using your hands to clap because clapping is a great way to accompany music and there are a few ways to uh, clap you can do that right now right together okay so we have the basic class and i have my hands like this so my fingers are in the middle of my hand all right and it's turned a little bit and what i noticed when i was studying this is that maybe you know this already, the dominant hand is on the top. So if I'm left-handed, I probably would be doing like this. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to do that. So let's play the, the steady clap, that downbeat clap. One, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we'll get a little faster, double it up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two. So those are the basic claps. You can clap even all four and you get into applause. That's, you know, random. 
But clapping a beat, let's look at a second beat, which is very popular, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, we have also a beat which is um, the beginning of a timekeeping beat that came from Africa originally with a bell pattern, and it's become a basic beat that we kind of recognize as clave. And you might may hear it in rock music, as well as cultural uh, uh, specific music. And it sounds like this. You've heard that before. Now, clave is also two fat sticks. And you hold them a certain way. You don't want the sound to be stopped, the vibrations, remember? So you just hold your hand like this and you put stick right in it so it just is touched the minimal amount and then use the other one across and you do that okay so you may hear hand bone hand bone where you been around the world and back again hand bone hand bone what do you hear I hear a clave in my ear. <laughs> okay, so you can clap that way. And then the Brazilians and many of them, they use the first half, which is bam, bam, ba. Because clave takes up two, two meters of music, two measures. So you repeat that first half all the time. It sounds like this. And this is relevant to the Brazilian thing we're about to do. Bam, bam, ba. Okay, repeat it without any break. Okay, good. Well, let's look at the Brazilian instruments then. Hope you can see me well. I'm going to go over here. Change this a little bit. I'll start off with the basic instrument, which is the big bass drum known as the surdu. The surdu is named after the word for deaf, which is surdu, because the deaf people can hear, more likely feel, the vibration through the ground. And this is the sound of the surdu. play it with one hand because I'm going to use my other hand to play the other instruments. Okay, so this instrument is a snare drum. Snare drum because it has snares on the bottom, these wires. Batuk was one of the first drum units uh, in Brazil, and again, it uh, came from um, an African word, and that was something like a, a society of people who were the drummers in the community. So this is a bateria, and that's a very popular word everywhere in Brazil, Brazil for drum, a drum unit. And this particular drum is named after the word eating because the rhythm is played on one side with one stick in one hand usually so it goes like this okay yeah so you 
could signal the group to come in and go out with this, and you accent it, and you lead it, and you change the rhythm. So let's start it. This is how they might start the thing. sound and I'm going to use this. This is a clave instrument. This is made of plastic but it sounds like wood. I'm going to use it to do the that we're going to clap. I'm going to ask you to clap along. Here's the clap. And the drum.
which is done in the small nightclubs, and they start have the samba uh, in Hedu, which is a samba story, which is done with these instruments at the carnival. So that's a lot of stuff right there. And um, before, I'm going to show you a little bit of video of, of Brazilian um, drumming in the context. But before we go to that, I want to show you something from Brazil also, which is a different kind of instrument. This is a musical bow from Brazil. It's called a berimbau. It's spelled B-E-R-I-M-B-A-U. But if you say it fast, it sounds like you're saying B-E-D, -E like bed. Uh, so you could say berimbau, berimbau. All right, it's good to practice it a couple of times, berimbau. Could you pass me my berimbau? And these are the things that go with it small stick, a coin, and this originally was money in Brazil called a dobrão, going back a few centuries here. Capoeira developed in the uh, 15th century, and samba developed in the 16th century, so they're pretty old. So this is the way you would hold everything when you're putting the bimbao and play it like this. It started as a martial art, but because it was bonding for the Africans of the different nations in Brazil, and it led to them being unified to revolt against slavery, it was banned. So it was disguised as a dance, and that's how it has evolved ever since. It's uh, probably one of the things that influenced break dancing in the 70s, because Brazilians came over to New York, and when the the street dancers in the Bronx, Brooklyn, saw what they were doing with the flips and the spins and the freezes. They incorporated that into their street dancing, their popping, their locking, and became spins on the ground and freezes on the ground with the dance, so that became break dancing. So capoeira was a part of that. Okay, so that's a good look at Brazil. Let's see if I can share my screen. 
screen and show you some of the masters at work. Okay, I'm gonna go over here. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Share computer sound. Share there. Hey, Samba's Yehoda. And the reggae. So here is Samba Jehoda with some uh, seniors. Wait a minute, am I sharing the screen? We can see your screen, but we just see the document with the link. Yeah, yeah, that's what I see. Oh, let me go back. Hmm, up to share. All right, I'll try it again. Do you need to open a browser page, maybe? Um, this page right here. Now, what do you see? Okay. How's that? Okay, we got it. Okay, so I'm not sharing the screen anymore, right? That's right. We that's see right. you again. Okay, so that's one thing I forgot to show you was the Pondero. This is um, a special thing in Brazil. It's also called a frame drum because it has no body. It's just a frame. And um, they play it. So this is what you were seeing there, along with the, the folkloric dance. And uh, just switch uh, again to share screen and show you something else. And let me see. I'm going to try something here. Uh, where's my document? It'll take a minute. Uh, no, I do want to share that. Mm -hmm. Not back there. Okay, we see your screen. We see your screen. Okay. Ah, uh, this is what I was looking for. All right, so um. Here is a master playing the instrument that we talked about. Uh, 
Let's see if it works a little better. All right, guys, let's continue. Oh. more flavor than that okay you're gonna keep the base for me the clave i'm gonna put some variation on top of him okay <laughs> and let's do it like a little in the middle not too slow not too fast okay it's like this one and two one two three four Masters from the Brazilian percussion world, who happens to live in New Orleans now, and uh, he was showing how to play the hepik to together with the surdu. So now let's take a look at a little bit of capoeira. Let's share the screen. Again. I can find it here. Here we go. Screen. That document, uh, Capoeira. There's the link. Can you see my screen? Um, you are sharing your screen, but we don't see anything. It's dark. I don't see anything yet. Maybe I'll just walk over there and magnetize this thing. Don't see anything yet, I see. We hear it, but we don't see it. Well, let me just play it then. Yeah, it's fine. On here it says sharing is paused. Bring your shared window to the front. Hmm, what does that mean? Resume share. Okay. Resume, sh resume share. Hmm. Still don't see anything. I'm going to stop the share right now. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. We get we we can picture it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I'll move on. Okay, I'll keep going with my presentation. All right, we've uh, pretty much done Brazil. Let's look at African drumming for a minute here. And here we have the African drum that is probably the most famous drum in the world. You see it's got this beautiful covering. This is in the in the spirit of what's called kinti cloth, which is a Ghanaian cloth that is used for special occasions. And uh, that's what it looks like. So they made the, the base of the drum look like that. And you've seen this drum. It's called a djembe. Uh, and it's made from goat skin usually and the wood with sound like this. And 
it's loud drum. I hope uh, he's not killing the mic. This drum is a dynamic sound and it goes to in an ensemble where there's lead drummer and several other drummers. And the bass drum is here. It's called a Jung Jung. It sounds like this. is the bass for the ensemble. There are usually three of these bass drums and then the ensemble may have anywhere from two to however many they want. Of course, you don't want too many because this gets a little bit too crowded. You don't have room for different rhythms and different tones. But these are the two basic drums for African drumming. And they lead to like the, the bateria that we had having a bass and then have the other drum, middle drum, and the leader. And again, again with the bells and the shakers. And this is the African thing I want to talk about basically. Then we have the Cuban drums. And I talked about djembes before. The djembe, I mean, sorry, the congas before. And I said in Brazil, the atabakis. And these congas are very particular to Cuban drumming. They are used now in Puerto Rico, in the United States, and all around the world. Conga drums are the drums you'll find with most bands. So when you have You have this conga drum going. You have the basic for salsa. So let's say you're playing a salsa beat called tumbao. It goes like this: clave. Remember that sound? That rhythm. So they have a family of percussions. An important one and a big one is the timbales. I'm going to move the congas aside for a minute here. So you can see the timbales. Now these timbales are two. So that's why it's timbales. And uh, if it was one, it would be a timbal. And this drum here from Brazil is called a timba. Timba drum, and this is not to be mixed up with the timbale. This drum is played with the hands, and it's used in a version of samba called samba reggae, which I'll gladly show you if we had another hour. And it's on the video. But here's the timbales. So you um, see the timbales on the side, and this is very um, standard, let's say. Then you play them on the top. So I'm going to go from the side to the top. Uh, start with the clave. Mm. And then 
then when the music evolved into a little more into the groove, you go from the, the timbales to the bell. And then the bell, if the timbale player is working alone, he plays a big bell and a small bell. slim down the group, the timbale player will play that part over here. So when you see a Latin jazz group, instead of being a 12-piece salsa band, it's a five-piece Latin jazz group, the timbale player may be doing that type of thing. So this is very Cuban, and because of the embargo on Cuba for, you know, 60 years or so, when salsa was evolving here in this country, uh, it came with the Son Montuno from Cuba and met with jazz and became salsa. In New York City in particular, the Puerto Ricans really took charge. They took over and developed the music and they developed the sound. So they have been doing salsa here for um, many years, but it started with the Son Montuno in Cuba and came to the United States. Then speaking of the Puerto Ricans, they have their own cultural expression, and it's a beautiful thing. And one of the, there's the two dance and music forms in Puerto Rico. One is called bomba, and the other one is called plena. Bomba is done with the conga drum. And they have their own version, which are called um, barrel, barrel drum, barrelito. And they have a leader drum and the follower drum. And the basic rhythm is this. other instruments that go with it. One is the maracas. So you hear. In addition to that, there's a stick player playing same basic rhythm on the sticks. 
And they're working all together, these three units, the six, the congas, and I don't know if I can do them all, but I'm going to try. slavery times, it was a cultural expression of Africans in under slavery in Brazil working in the sugar, in, in Cuba, Puerto Rico working in the sugarcane fields, who uh, rested on that day and entertained themselves. And uh, it was relaxing music. Now, this is the other national music known as plena. Plena is more social commentary developed after bomba, and it was influenced by bomba, but it had Spanish influences as well. And you can see they use frame drums. There's three of them. I have the middle and the smallest size. And it was a different type of rhythm they had. Uh, they hold the drums like this. You know, people hold their uh, frame drums in different ways. You know, the Brazilians play that pandeiro, which is the one with the jingles. They hold it like this. Play like that. And the Puerto Ricans have theirs, and they hold it up here, and they play it like this. So this would be the beat for the middle one. No. And someone would play the large one. I'm going to play the large one here on this. And then the small one is improvising. So from a distance you hear boom doom da doom doom da boom doom da doom da doom da doom da doom da doom 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 da and that's a walking type of a beat. And then sometimes it gets fast. Playing that sounds like that. Much different from bomba. Chick, boom, 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 chick, boom, 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 chick, boom, 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 chick, boom, boom, boom. And the, they use them in popular music as well as in this folkloric setting. I, I did have some video with that stuff on it, with them playing it. And... Uh, the commentary is, again, social commentary on what's happening in the community, with local politics, with uh, you know, government um, policies, with relationships, with uh, births and deaths. That would be the material that they're singing about in the plena. It was like a living newspaper. And in Christmas time, they do Christmas caroling, doing this rhythm. They go from house to house, last, you know, way into the night. Again, it's the tropical tropics, so... It's a little more fun to go, <laughs> go all night long out there and uh, sing Christmas carols, their own version called Parandas in Spanish. So it, it's pretty nice. So that's Puerto Rico. Then I wanna look at the Dominican Republic before we go, because you know, there are like 13 countries in the Caribbean, so many countries and um, 54 African countries. So the African influence came from several of those countries, but we can only touch on a few. 
same thing with the Caribbean. There's so many countries to look at. There's Guadeloupe and Martinique and Jamaica and Haiti and Trinidad and goes on and on. So I just picked out a few. Um, the Dominican Republic, they have a national music known as merengue. Merengue uses this drum, right? This is the uh, tambor, which is also the word for drum in general. And it uses that scraper that I showed you. Let me show it to you again. Oh, yeah. This one. Gosh, my, my pitch is delayed. And this goes with a rhythm that doesn't sound like that very much, but they will fit together. And this rhythm, uh, the way you play this is you put it on your lap sideways. And I'm going to strap it around me, which is what they do because it tends to run. The drum starts to run off your lap. You know, you get it on there, right? Okay, so they're going to be playing like this. And one hand will hold a stick, the other hand will be there, and it will be slapping in the middle and on the edge. You get sound, both sounds. And then this one will be playing here and on here. Okay, and then let me see if I can get a sense of a downbeat with this. Do -do 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 Okay, uh, it's a bit in my way. No, I think that'll be okay. All right, so here we go. This merengue is going. Do 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 ding, ba doom ba doom ba. Do 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 boom. Two, three, four. One, two, three. to the downbeat. One, two, three, two, 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 three. Uh, and the merengue it plays, can be played slowly and it can be played fast. It started off as a slow rhythm and it was started off in the brothels in the uh, Dominican Republic. And for a long time it was associated with low life and it was not accepted. But after a while it got accepted and a particular dictator had them create merengue songs that praised him so much it actually as bad as he was his name was Trujillo it boosted the uh, popularity of the music so it's officially the national music of merengue of uh, Dominican Republic and people are very proud of that and again the guiro guira and the tambor are the sounds of merengue so the Dominican Republic had that but as of late, not too recently, I would say last you know, 30 years, they developed another music that's very popular with dancers, and uh, it's called bachata. And that music is uh, often romantic. It uses the bows and uh, For teenagers in Jamaica, and the bachata music is very popular with them. The bongos, <clears throat> you can hear. But you can't get a complete sound sense of it from just the bongos alone, but that's the dominant and dominant sound. And you hear the clave going stiff.
and there's an artist named Juan Luis Guerra. He's probably the most famous uh, proponent of the sound. And he developed his musical skills in Dominican Republic, then came here to Boston and went to Berkeley and learned all about harmony and arranging and went back to the Dominican Republic and started his group called Cuatro Cuarenta, which is 440. And uh, they became a huge group and he's the most best-selling uh, Dominican artist of all time. And uh, he has an album you might really like called Bachata Rosa, which is a huge, hugely successful album. And it elevated the bachata again, started in the poor communities and became a very powerful and representative uh, music form in Dominican Republic. And as of late, along with the hip hop generation, there is a music out of Dominican Republic called reggaeton, which a lot of it was developed in the studio, you know, the music studio electronically. And uh, that has a lot of singing involved, though, not just rapping. And um, not that rapping is not you know, legitimately difficult to do well. <laughs> you may not sing that way, but if you try it, it is uh, kind of hard to do it well. So the reggaeton has uh, a unique history, and it's hugely popular all around the world. They're doing it in every corner where there's young people. And... Uh, rapping and hip hop music as well. So they've become integrated because music integrates, it, it, it absorbs other forms and it becomes uh, something new out of that. And uh, but sometimes the other form is left by the wayside, but sometimes it just carries along and just morphs. And that ha happens in traditional music with the drum culture as well. So I hope you've enjoyed our time today. I apologize for not being able to show you those video clips. Um, keep working on the technology, but um, I hope you, you will be able to carry some of this with you and uh, keep on drumming, keep on singing, and we'll be seeing you in the future. Take it back to you, Beth. <laughs>